What's up? This is Cuddy again, and we're going to do another quick speed painting here. Um, as you can see, I always do stuff in, in rough blocks and shapes first, so I'm going to lay in a sky and establish my horizon. Kind of just block the page out into two here in the beginning. <clears throat> um, a, a lot of this is because you'll see that I break down each thing into major shapes, and then from there we'll start to apply more color, more brushes. Um, you know, and, and, and put the effects in and so forth. So we'll start to lay in some of the groundwork for the for a bit of the cliffs here and a little bit of the grass. Start to lay in some of the sand work. Um, this again is, is using a reference photo. Um, this is done really quickly and I want to say I used just one brush, maybe, maybe two brushes uh, for the entirety of this. Um, you can see right now I'm laying down the, uh, the 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 basic layer to get going for the water here. So I'll start to do some of the variations in color and just really rough it in at this point because we're always going to go back and, and do a little refining. Um, but this is the way that you want to lay it out here for the start. Um, dropping in some of the shadows, some of the shadow spots that I know around some of the rocks. Um, <clears throat> Again, you can you can see I'm still using just that same brush to work out to lay lay down the basics. Um, for this this one, I took a little bit longer than some of the other thumbnails that you might have watched, um, and that's that that's just like a personal preference thing. I just decided to go a little bit further with this one. I really didn't have any deadlines or anything going on, so I thought I would just play a little play a little deeper into this. Um, you'll see here I start to lay out some of the rocks and we're going to grab some different colors, um, you know, some bright yellows, a little bit of the peach, I, I still use some of that, a darker green or brown, and, and really mix it in there. Uh, it'll, it'll really give a lot of life to them in the end, instead of using just uh, a dark brown for the shadow, a light brown for the mid, and then, you know, uh, a, a bright yellow or something for the, for the highlight. By switching up some of those color variations, it, it, it just adds a little more. And uh, you'll find that if you're using photo references, you'll see that that's just the way that it is. Um, a lot of things don't hold their particular hue when, when dropping into shadows or even expressing certain highlights. Um, so, you know, some of those variations add quite a bit. Um, just laying in, doing basic highlights and rips around rocks. We'll set up to get going on some of the water here. So for a quick lay-in, I'm going to add a little bit of texture in for the dirt, for the sand area. We want to grit that up a bit, separate it from the rocks, give it its own, give it its own view. And basically we're going to work on this shore a bit more before pushing into that background again to give the cliff some depth and, and work on the water. Um, the, the basics that you can see is that the, the original shapes that we laid down are still holding, so the composition remains the same throughout the entire process. We're just going to add in detail. And that, that's, that's really the important part about laying down those big, broad shapes in the beginning. Um, so now you see the color variation coming in for the cliffs. Do some of, the, uh, some of that hot orange. It's good to make it pop. And then we're going to top the thing with a little bit of grass to, to, to pull it back down a little later and hit it with some of these hot highlights that really showed the uh, the open and exposed rock but still keeping it very simple um, all I've done is reduce the size of that original brush that I was using so I haven't I haven't switched that up or anything for the texture yet um, and then same with the grass here just reducing the size of the brush to get a finer tip and work in on some smaller detail uh, you see we're just starting to push some push some shadows into those those back cliffs and trying to find those a little more just kind of pull out bit by bit um, you know keep things relatively uniform in, in the start and then pick little spots to add uh, greater values to add a little a little more shadow in or to punch up a highlight um, all these little bits are really what helps to, to, to sell the overall final image that way uh, when it's all finished out, it's very easy to tell. Okay, this is rock, and this is this is the the, the sandy shore, and, and and the water, and so forth. Just darkening up the sky a bit, 
uh, I felt like leaving it, and, and in the photo it is just the one color of the blue all the way up. It's a very clear sky in the photo. But I thought just adding a little bit of darkness there to the top and, and giving it a slight grade adds a little bit more and helps to round out the uh, the composition of the colors and, and the values there. Um, I am grabbing a texture brush and I'm going to lay that in in certain spots just to kind of vary up and, and give a little bit of texture around. And this is still basically the base of the water layer. Um, so, you know, we started with the flats and then kind of put in for our shadow and highlight. And then we did that that quick speckling for the for the detail. Now I'm going back in with just a soft round brush and uh, and working out the forms a little more. So we're we're defining where the waves are and where a wave crest may be. And and, and as you can see that as I go along I add highlights or things get a little bit brighter, things get a little picked up more. Um, and that's that's the reason why I start with the the darker base. Um, it's just a personal way that I like to work. I like to add highlight as opposed to shadow for the most part. But you can see the the water's already had quite a quite a change to it now that we've we've been putting a little bit of detail in there, and uh, we'll really refine that and make it pop by the end. Uh, doing a little more work on the rocks here. We're gonna actually define this a little more, give 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 some more shape and shadow to these things, and work out the edges on them a little better. Just to just to help push that that visual image, um, you know, it's it's not that you need any particular, you know, brush overlays or some sort of extra thing like that. A lot of this is just you know, uh, and some of it is just a trial and error. You see what works. If it doesn't, like I'm doing right here, just do a resizing. Um, a lot of for the a lot of those things like birds or some extra stuff that I'm laying over the top, I'll put on a separate layer, just because it wasn't there in the original composition, and I want to be able to manipulate it as much as possible. Um, but for the rest of this stuff, it's all on one layer. So as I'm doing all of that, uh, for the most part, all it's all on on one transparency sheet of its own, um, and. It, that's a personal preference. In my early work, I used a lot more layers, and I think a lot of that just comes with being a little more un, uh, unsure about the decisions you're making, or you know, you you haven't quite decided that that you know everything is fixable, or that you know how to fix something, so you separate it a little more. Um, nowadays, I seem to collapse my paintings as I go. If I stack up layers, I'll I'll merge them down, and then and then keep pushing forward. Uh, it keeps my file size down, makes the computer run a little smoother while I'm doing this sort of stuff. Um, it's not particularly necessary, and for certain jobs they will ask that stuff is in layers, uh, particularly anything that you're doing in animation. Um, when I'm doing animation backgrounds, a lot of those things need to be separated into elements and separate layers because they'll be moved uh, whenever they're doing the editing and the animation for it. Um, but for these, you know, it's, it's real loose. There's no, I'm not worried about, oh, I got to drop a guy in here later. So, you know, I have to make sure this is all separate. Uh, this, this is just something for fun, for practice, something to, to loosen up the wrist and, and, uh, and get the creative juices flowing without using too much brain power. You see, I'm fooling around with, uh, with one of the Photoshop brushes that's for, for laying grass in. And on the side, I'm, I'm continuing to pull down the, the properties for the brush and so that I can adjust those, the, those, those presets and change some of the dynamics and, and scattering and so forth. Because I don't really want this to particularly look exactly like correct. I just wanted to put in a bit of that, of that texture there to kind of push that idea that it is, you know, just tall grass off to the side and that it's not... Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not as, as flat and as plain as the cliffs or, or, or the beach shore itself. Um, as we continue around here, just going to start to kind of spice things up, little bits here and there. So it's going to be small highlights that we add in. Um, right now, some of the stuff is kind of like, it's just taking a step back and looking and going, okay, well, where do I think needs a little punch up? Um, sometimes it's, you know, it's just things that you're looking at in the photo and you say, oh, that just needs to be a little brighter there. For this one, 
After I got to a certain point, I kind of left the photo alone and decided to start to punch it up a bit of, on my own. Um, and that's where you, some of these extra little highlights rocks or, or little things are coming in. Just pieces where as I step back, I say, okay, well, it would help if if this had a little more detail to it or if this had a little more definition. So you see, I started to put in a little bit uh, along the shorelines to kind of show that, you know, it's it's not quite as dry or that, that, that there is still water that's washing up and, and that it's an active shoreline instead of looking quite so separated and, and, and plain. Um, you know, doing just a little bit of detail with the with the birds there. I just want to add a slightly darker tip on the wings. Um, now we're going to go through and really kick up the uh, kick up the ocean here and add those real bright pure white highlights on the crest of the waves. Um, as you can see, this makes a big difference in terms of making it pop. Um, really getting those the, those bright and heavy highlights in. That's to me. That's really what sells it quite often. Um, but I but I believe that building up from the darker tones to this point and doing this at the end, that's what allows you to really pick and choose. Okay, a real hot hit on maybe this corner of the rock will will help sell this this particular spot or this scene or the lighting or something like that. But as a, if you don't have that foundation already built up, then you're adding that too early and you'll you'll probably end up muddying the photo up a bit or muddying the, the, the picture just because it wasn't built up in that process. Um, so this is, this is pretty much it. There's not too much else to it. As you can see, there's our final. So thanks for watching another one.